Okay, I know this is an older story, but uh, I wanted to do it anyway. Uh, this is on a plane comic. Toby Morris, whoever the fuck that is, explains exactly how privilege works. Uh, let me blow this up here a little bit for all you wonderful peoples. Uh, speaking of privilege, I would like the privilege of your money. Uh, please support me on Patreon. One dollar or more a month gets you access to a bunch of Patreon exclusive rants, at least ten a month, and it goes up from there. For the five dollar level, you can tell me what to rant about, and you can see the other uh, perks as they uh, as you get to them. All right, this is on a plate. Uh, let me blow it up a little bit more. Okay, then that should all right. This is Richard. His parents are doing okay, despite the fact that he's a baby with gray hair. This is Paula. Her parents, not so much. Okay, um, so Richard committed the great sin of being born in a family that aren't a pack of fucking losers. Richard's house is warm and dry, his shelves are full of books, and his fridge is full of food. Richard's a baby. He can't fucking read, and he can't feed himself. Paula's house is full of people and not much help. It's damp, noisy, and she keeps getting sick. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to have a tangent on this later. Richard's parents will do anything for their baby. Good boy, clever. So the parents are nurturing him. So, well, Paula's, that's why they work two jobs. Okay, so you need four jobs to pay the rent. Didn't the other thing say that Paula's house was full of people and not much else? So, obviously, there's more than one, two working fucking adults there. What about Paula's grandma? What about Paula's grandpa? I'm assuming that... One of the other adults there is the last generation of parents. And again, Paula's making the choice right now to sit in her ass and watch TV. Richard goes to a great school, well-resourced, good jobs. His teachers love their job. Paula's school's class sizes are large. The school is underfunded. It looks like the teachers are child and stretched out thin from stress. However, it also looks like one goes to a private school, one goes to a public school, although I don't like the uniforms in either one of these comics. However, the sad fact of the matter is I thought teachers didn't do it for the money. I thought teachers did it for some fucking insane inane desire to help the next fucking generation of kids. Also, maybe Richard's neighborhood, where he goes to school, voted to be taxed senseless for all these stupid fucking school things, and hers didn't. But again, it, it this is not indicative of, of anything deserving of privilege. There are how many people that come up from Paula's area and make more money than Richard? Again, schools' budgets are set by property values, not... And again, let's be honest, when your average superintendent makes a six-figure-a-year fucking salary... Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think maybe there's a problem with how we spend our school money. Uh, maybe we can see why the expectations set for Richards are different for Paula. In the Richards panel, B+, plus, we better get you a tutor. B, not so bad. Okay. Let me tell you why this is where Richard isn't, where Paula is actually the pri privileged one. Because Paula's parents understand that she's going to excel in certain areas and fall off in others. Richard's parents are these dipshits that actually think that unless a kid gets straight A's in fucking high school, he's going to amount to diddly dick in life. When reality is, most of your high school bullshit they teach you doesn't mean shit in your actual life. And I'll give you an example. Most of the time, this over-pushing by parents of B+, we need a tutor... 
ends up with a kid being kind of fucked up. I'll give a real quick story. The valedictorian of my high school, no, I'm not going to say this person's name. Um, this person, uh, their parents really pushed him. He was an A-plus student, like a four-point-something GPA. And because of this, he didn't really have a normal teenage years. Didn't really have that. Because his parents were pushing academics on him so much. That when he got to be, uh, I don't know how many years ago it was. But when he got to be an adult, well, he started dating teen girls. Uh... And over the years, the little differences, parents paying for the university, juggling work and politics, still getting into debt. Okay, this is where the comic really goes, where it really starts to irritate me. She's working in a professional kitchen from the looks of it. Okay, there's a waitress in the background, and she's reading her book while this dipshit eats pizza and drinks beer. Okay. He could have spent his college time getting drunk and amounting to nothing. She is in an area where even if the polytech shit doesn't work out, she can just go to her chef who runs the kitchen and goes, hey, can I start learning this valuable skill? And then he goes and he has, I have friends working there. I'll have a word, get you an internship. And Paula's dad is dying. And Paula's going to look after him. Well, that's Paula's choice. I hate to sound cruel, but that's Paula's choice. Also, an internship is an unpaid position. Uh, who the fuck? Richard is going to be working his ass off for no money. And again, he could fuck it up. All he's got to do is show up to work drunk once. And because each little different sneaks by unnoticed, uh, apparently they're trying for a loan. Uh, Richard is, of course, approved. Paula is not. She has to go to easy finance. What the fuck is this loan for? What, to start a business? Buy a home? Pay off credit card. What is the fucking loan? Like, what? What is it for? What is it fucking for? I, I, I Sorry, but this, this seems like a personal loan. If one of the other things is easy finance, like, is it for a car? Is it, what is this for? And, oh, oh, if it's for education, thanks. We have no denial student loans. So both Paula and Richard could get loans. Um... Uh, Richard's boss says, you're Richard's boy. I've heard good things, keeping his eye on you. And Paulo's boss says, sweetie, I'm keeping my eye on you. Despite the fact that Paula is working for a catering company, which the waitresses there actually do make more. But again, there's a lot of jobs for unskilled Paula that are fairly lucrative. Paula starts to settle and learns to know her place. Again, Richard could fuck this all up because, you know, <laughs> he does have to work hard to get the promotion where this comic strip ends. Like if he just laid around and jacked off, his boss would have fired him. Also, his bo boss put him under a gun. I've heard good things about you. I'm keeping my eye on you. So if he doesn't go above and beyond everyone else, then he's looked at as less than. I love how you shoot yourself in the fucking foot. Like, this guy is expected to be above and beyond because he's he, the, his boss knows his dad. 
And obviously, his dad must have done some good work. So it's like, you're supposed to be a cut above. That's the pressure placed on Richard. It's just Richard succeeded, whereas Paula, I don't know, for whatever reason, didn't. And that's because of the her choices in life. Again, we go back to this thing. Where was her grandma helping her with her schoolwork? You just said in the comics that Paula's house is full of people. Since I see no mention of brother or sisters in this, and since Paula's sitting alone on the couch, I'm assuming there's no brother or sisters. So where is Paula's grandma or grandpa to help her with her schoolwork? You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, Richard took advantage of the opportunities that were given to him. But here's the thing about opportunity. You can be given it or you can make it. Paula could have made it. And I hate to bring this up, but there is something bad of, you know, Paula's parents of, you know, maybe not learn your place, but it's not try. Paula in, in the comics is is basically consigned to her life as a catering waitress. Not bothering to, you know, keep looking for jobs or keep up with her studies or blah, blah, blah. By the way, you know, uh, you can get enough student loan money so you don't have to work through college. You do know that. Anyway, um, Richard says nobody ever handed him anything, and Paula's all pissed off. Well, nobody really did. What was what was Richard handed? See, here's the thing. Privilege dictates that Richard is entitled to these things, not, ra not based on his own merit, okay? If Richard was privileged, he'd be a CEO by birthright. But, okay, his parents were a little more attentive. Paula's weren't. And let's even go with uh, fucking, uh, let's even go with fucking uh, economic reasons. Which, again, I say is horse shit. And, again, doesn't make a whole lot of context in this comic. Richard, on his own, had to do well in school because his psychotic parents would give him tutors if he dared get a B plus. Whereas Paula's parents were more into her, you know, having a little bit of fun. Richard had to succeed on his own at university, which it looks like he did. Paula, it, right here, could have gone on to a very lucrative career in the culinary world. He got an opportunity to have a scholarship. He could have fucked it up and been fired on the spot. Paula chose to care for her sick dad versus studying and finishing school. Again, I know that sounds a little cruel, but again, choices... I don't know what the fuck this loan thing is. I, I still do not know. Like, what is this loan for? He's put on a pedestal by his boss where he has to do everything better than all of his other employees, whereas Paula actually has to do the bare fucking minimum. And maybe less than that if she blows her boss. He called her sweetie, remember? You know, this this idea that Richard had everything on, handed to him on a silver platter is laughable. And you defeated your own fucking point. Great job, Toby, whatever the fuck your name is. Great job. <laughs>